but there must have been some tape boys slipped in somewhere <laughs> for the predestinated seed. <laughs> they slipped over to her house and played some tapes. She made her, her own house in the church to receive the message. They still got them, you know. The message got to the predestinated seed anyhow. Well, my name is Jördis Breivik. I was born in a family which was quite poor. And I think that it was very nice to find a man as Brother Branham that also had been poor. But you see, I have been through the first, the second war war and uh, God have listened to my prayer even then before I met Brother Brana during the war he also answered my prayer I was so hungry one time I came home from the work and we didn't have anything on the table nothing no sugar no bread no milk, I didn't see the milk during the whole war. And I was coming from work and I sat down on the chair and I said, Oh Lord, if you don't give me any food now, I'm going to die. And someone called on the door. And you know, it was a little girl standing there with a big paper bag in her arms with things that what we call skorper around the bread full of skorper and she said I should ask from my mother if you wanted this and I said you have just saved my life God bless and I hugged that little girl and I said thank you I am from Norway I came to USA in 52, 1952, and as a exchange nurse. I went to Brother's meeting in the Philadelphia Church in Chicago at first time that year. And I tried to find out what kind of a person Brother Branham was. And he started with his childhood. And I thought to myself, uh-huh, this man wants a lot of money in the usher. I was very skeptic to him. And after a while, it seems to me that he had my thought already because he stopped in his meeting and he said to someone in the audience, you are sitting there, you have such and such sickness, and if you believe, you are healed now. And the power of the Lord was filling the whole audience, and I enjoyed it. And I said to myself, he must be a man of God after all. <laughs> then the power sort of went off, and I thought, oh, he could have been agree with her to say something like that. He stopped again right after my thought went out. And he did the same thing again, pointed on someone and said the same thing. And the power of the Lord was so mighty, it filled the whole audience. And of course, I said, well, could it be that he had been agree with two then he did it for the third time, stopped in his preaching and pointed at someone sitting there by me. And he said to that woman, you are living with your son and daughter-in-law. They have for a long time tried to get rid of you. They have even put sharp things in your food. But you haven't told that to anybody. But from now on, you shall see a new power in your home. Because those two 
are in a meeting, not here, in another meeting, but they are giving their souls to the Lord. And from now on, you shall see that you have peace in your home. And I can see her reaction. She started to cry of joy, of course. But then I said to myself, this man is a prophet for our time. I tried to read Brother Branham as wherever he was. So I had at least the four meetings later on. One of them was when he was stepping backwards from the pulpit and a voice said, this is not Branham that is speaking, that is I, the Lord. I am only using his voice cord. I went to more of his meeting and I went to one of them when I was in the prayer line and he was asking for whom has number one. Nobody answered. And then he said, then I had to say 25, 26, and 27. And two in the back of me stood up. So I had to look at my prayer card and I had number one. I didn't want to be number one because I knew I had to stand up there for quite a while before you start to pray for the sick. Well, I went up there and I said to the Lord, please let me not get so nervous. All the people in the audience is looking at me. And I felt I was surrounded by peace. After a while he had spoken for at least a quarter of an hour while I was standing there. And he said, Look at her, how peaceful she stands there. And he said, now you can come forth because now it's the pillar of fire there. And as I came forth, he started to speak about how and why I was at the prayer line. And I hadn't told him anything in the head of the time. And he started and saying, you have been operated for a tumor. But it wasn't a tumor, he said. It is your kidney that was laying there. And they could not remove that one. So this operation was no good for you. And he said, you are surprised. But I can see you are laying on the operating table and he pointed over on my left shoulder. And he said, you are going to be well. He didn't say you are, you are going to. And it took a while, but I got well. But then he told me, since I was the first one, I shall walk down this way and you others do the same, he said, after being with me. So when I got down on the main part of the floor, he looked after me and said, this is art. The pillar of fire is following you, sister. And that was because I had said it was so wonderful to stand there because I enjoyed it. It was like being in heaven. The atmosphere around Brother Branham was divine. And then he said, is that your husband? He was carrying our son on his arm and come forth. I said, yes. He said, Whatever is going to happen, you shall know the Lord is with you. And the Lord has been with me ever since. 